just across the river from New Jersey, New York City, as today we bring you Fox College Hoops sponsored by Jeep Grand Cherokee. It's the ACC and the Big East on display in the first of three, the Louisville Cardinals against Seton Hall. Hi again, everyone. Tim Brando, happy to be joined by the governor. This is uh, his part of the world, and he knows <laughs> these are two teams, highly competitive, and both, I think, trending in the right direction. They're trying to find an identity. I mean, both of them are very similar. A lot of the same philosophies on the defensive end. I think it's all going to boil down who gets the most free throws and the loose change. Speaking of trending in the right direction, Andy Katz, how about that Louisville win over Michigan State? What did it do for them? Well, that's right, Tim and Bill, and as you know, in this business with coaches and players, when you take over a job it's all about buying that credibility what are you selling and are the players buying it and the staff told me after they went 0-2 in New York they needed that win over Michigan State for the players to believe they got it they do we should have a great afternoon back to you Tim here are the starting lineups brought to you by Jeep Grand Cherokee Quincy McKnight the transfer is going to engineer this Seton Hall team and on the opposite side they're hoping for big things from Stephen Enoch inside for Chris Max Club in his first year after coming over from Xavier. Our officials for today's game, Mike Roberts, Brent Hampton, and Ron Groover. Outstanding crowd, places jumping nice here early. at the Rock. Well, people get up early in this part of the country. I know you're not used to that. I think I got in about the time you did. Well, they sat the place in the evening, so they're fresh in the morning. Indeed. Control to Seton Hall. To be busy right now. The cards. A lot of ball screens. Both clubs do a good job of it. Michael Enzi, terrific slipping. What a nice buy. Mama! Mama do! How about that cut? It's a compliment. Mamou Kelishvili, right out of the gates. This is a young man that made his way from across the pond, and we're expecting big things out of him as the season goes on. A greater inside presence certainly needed for Seton Hall with the loss of uh, some outstanding talent, as you well know. To me, right now, a little matchup, 2-3, a bite on the pump. Oh. Harry, inside, and a quick rebound taken down by Michael Enzi. Nice kick. Beautiful fight. Powell on the wing. In the early, that's where you've got to find Powell. Dynamite in the open floor. At 40 against Grand Canyon. I shook hands with him. was still hot. <laughs> They're trying to find their second scorer on this team. I think it's going to vary game to game. So it just seems to be that type of lineup. And she's very good around the rim. Very clever. That would remind you of uh, some outstanding play that they got in the past from the likes of Delgado. It's it's hard coming into this building and not seeing Carrington, Delgado, Sonogo. Exactly. So much of that talent. Like old suits. Yeah. yeah. Accustomed to the little full court pressure back up, make him lose. Nothing going with 13 on the clock. Got to go to the rim. Or shoot that. Yeah. As very, well. Very guy who's very good at turning the corner. Gets to the rim very well. Makes those three. That just moves around the rim, the Euro step, etc. Darius Perry, young man out of Marietta, Georgia. A lot of ball slips, you'll see. Ball screen slips. Hale. Ooh, if that happens. Miles Dale out of Middletown, Delaware. 33% from three. You're looking for somebody to ring the bell. That certainly helps. Yeah, he only had one bucket against Miami in what was a very important win as well for the Hall. <laughs> nice kick. Sutton with a beautiful dish. Here he is with Enoch on the offensive blast, but he can't get it to go. Pulled away by Enzi, but I think he might have been on the end line. He was. There's Chris Mack. What a remarkable career at Xavier, his alma mater, before taking this job. Uh, I think probably a destination location for him no in many Mike, ways. Chris is from there. Uh, the guy is an amazing teacher. Wins. Nice little step in. Inbound steal by Powell. Knocked away by Perry. And just a little extra bump at the end. Got to protect that ball at the rim. Once again, the ability to turn it over and get open to Robert Dale. Thought he could have done a better job protecting that basketball. Get it on the right hip. First foul on Darius Perry. They're getting back to Chris Mack. 
Amazing, Xavier, the consistency of the program. Yeah. The ability to develop players is extraordinary. And that's what he's doing with this year's team. And Indeed. from what I'm told next year, Tim, right. you know, loading up with some really talented kids. Uh, uh, Laura, one of those guys that's certainly going to help him in the future as well. Miss that open uh, jumper. There's Kevin Willard. What a job he has done here now in his ninth season. Hard to believe. Four and two overall, of course. Uh, born into the game, was coached by his son, uh, by his father at Pitt, and uh, had a tremendous tie with the Louisville program and, and Rick Pitino, of sure. course, as well at one time. Big shoes to fill when you think of Carlissimo, yeah. uh, ra uh, ra Raftery. Ray. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, is that 11 years you held on to that, John? Oh, my God. Oh, my goodness. Goodness. <laughs> they didn't look at results. <laughs> very good low post player. Likes to bounce. Got hooks, Enoch. Uh, very tough one. Yeah, I think that gives him a nice presence. Uh, Ramu Kanashvili actually did a nice job defensively there. They do a nice job of finding trail people. They're looking for Powell. Good cover. There's the kick out to Powell. Sutton with the tough match here. Street line draw rejected by Enoch. Big present. So couldn't get that one high enough, but that's what's made Powell such a tough out. He's quicker, he's lost that weight, he's healthy. Just couldn't elevate high enough with the big fella. McKnight triggering it into Enzi. Well, that's gonna be a reach in foul. Take a look now at our Geico players to watch, Bill. Well, obviously, Laura, we mentioned that it's very confident. Talking to Chris before the game, he thinks offense really has a great feel for the game. Tough four-man matchup for people. His game inside gets better, and, and Enoch is a key to that. They're going to be even more of a difficult team to, to solve as the season wears on. Shot clock down to five. Hale's going to have to do it nice on his hand. own. Stripped away. Beautifully done by Wara. On the other end, that's how Cunningham has it knocked away. Swatted out by Mamu Kalashvili again. Yeah, good hustle. That's why you run the floor to help your teammates. A pretty good hands at the one end, but a nice counter with the balance being in a good spot. Puts the McKnight offering it up as well. I think we can call him Mamu Kalashvili. We can go Sandro now. That ball's knocked away. It'll be triggered into the front court by Louisville with 20 to shoot. I think we can call Mamu Kalashvili a Sandro now. You sure. <laughs> as long as the folks don't call. <laughs> no long distance amount. Four missed layups early on for Louisville, but they have been well defended. A nice little high-low here. Ooh. Almost a carry yeah. by Enoch. Working on Sandro. Goes to the left Top. hand. That's he, a beautiful move. He's got some talent down low. I just like his style. I don't think Chris wants him to go to the rim. Don't be fading away with those hooks. Constant motion, Powell. Up and over Perry. Strength, huh, to get it up there. Darius will get the foul. Yeah, pretty good start from Seton Hall, but looming large in that low block area. Enoch with the ability to convert. It's the Big East and the ACC on Fox, the first of three today. Our score, 9-5, to five, Seton Hall in the early going at the Rock in New Jersey. And the last game of the season a year ago, Trayvon Blewett in the Big East scored 22 points, leading Chris Mack's Xavier team to the regular season title, a 65-62 win at Wintrust in Chicago. And look at that record. And again, in keeping with Xavier's tradition of being really the cradle of outstanding coaches in college sure. basketball. Well, of course, in 2017, he beat his buddy Sean Miller to get to the Elite Eight in Arizona. Uh, but outstanding teacher, that really understands the game and how to teach it. Good player relations, and of course, he's got a heck of a staff. Mike Pagese, he brought with him. Luke Murray, he brought yeah. with him. A couple of friends of ours over the years. And of course, Dino Gaudio, which I think is a great oh, hire. Big time hire. Dino. Not only yeah. because of his experience as a head coach, but his work in that part of the country. No doubt. Covering ACC basketball and the rest of the uh, basketball world as well. After he left Wake Forest, uh, Dino Gaudio was uh, an analyst, did some work. Uh, Dino Gaudio did a great job.
for your alma mater. Over at the old four-letter network, yours too. <laughs> yep. And uh, I think coming out, he, he knew he wanted another run, and he had been in contact with Chris. He told me about the potential. If he landed a certain job at a certain time, would he be willing to come back? Shows, I think, a lot of security on the part of Chris to bring in a, a scribe like him. Absolutely. A little pressure again. And they can use clock and overthinks offense. They need him to light it up. That's a well, lucky dude. Good intercept it. Four on the floor. One of three or four transfers they have. Brad's situation. Impact transfers, too. Here's Cunningham with the clock at four. And it won't fall. But there's, again, outstanding work by Enoch on the offensive boards. Nice job. We were almost a five second home ball situation. Yep. Yeah, long time you can do it. Doing a nice job trapping and taking away yeah. passing lane. They got a foul. A little, a little bit of a bailout. Boy, you intrude in that particular cylinder. You're going to pay for it. But these have been nice reads by Seton Hall. Yeah, and Quincy McNaught got a little yeah. too physical with the lower body there. See, no young, question. The young man McMahon coming into the game. Outstanding sharpshooter from Sarasota. Cardinal Mooney High School. Ryan McMahon. Watch for him from downtown. A great catch and shoot guard. Yeah, you know, let's get it out of the way. Out of the way. You know, who recommended him? <laughs> Dick Vitale. Dick Vitale in Sarasota, yeah, which is his home. Relent. He can make shots too. Nice. Again, you got to come up with those opportunities. He called Patino about him. He sure did. It's seen in high school in Sarasota. He's mixed his game up, too. He can really drive it much better. Yeah, he's become much more of a complete player in the time that he's been at Louisville. Nelson on the floor, really going to be a nice-looking player. Little lefty stroke, good feel for the game, good passer, nice cross. Powell. He didn't have much room, did he? That's what Coach Eight Chow is going to end up. We did. It didn't work. Here's Anthony Nelson checking McMahon, as you mentioned. If he went out of bounds, he did. Lost sight of where he was, and it's a Louisville turnover. Uh, I think he may have got a little bump, but how about this? Look at the space. Very little nylon from deep. Boy, he has got a pure stroke. And look at the elevation, yeah. too. And Jerry West, in the old days, you go up as high as you have to. And this is nylon on a consistent basis for Powell. You know, the thing I love about Powell is he knows on the scouting report he's moved from, like, the fourth option to the first option, and he's handled it well. But even he's number one in terms of shots yeah. that he can take and yeah. permissible opportunities without those aforementioned seniors. A little runner from Nelson. Oh, tipped in on the offensive boards. Enzi, I think Enzi right there, he is terrific on the glass. But are really having a tough time penetrating and not really attacking. That's the shot McMahon wants. Hey, ooh, wait, but that's one you can't let him have. Yeah. In transition, too. Out of bounds, it'll be controlled to Louisville. Uh, NG really understands. Watch him. He becomes the inside guy. And, and almost like the defender and his ability to block guy out and get a tip. All well, right, now the difference in this game, poor shooting from downtown for Louisville. They're one of six from beyond the arc. They've missed their last five. And the Hall in the midst of a 6-0 run, as you see their leading scorer taking a seat, averaging just over 24 a game coming in. Well, they got to do a better job on the glass here. Seat Hall, they're going to pay for it. A lot of back screen pop, like any good shooter. McMahon, excellent going without the basketball. All right, Nelson really in McMahon's kitchen. Here comes the pop-out from Akoya Dow, the Georgetown transfer. Sutton on the dribble drive, and he's hacked. They could give it to Mambo if they would like. Really Jimmy also. Shavar coming over there to help as well. Could have been him, too, underneath. Yep. It does go against Mamou Kalashvili. Europe. And then the free throw line is Sutton. on the floor now gives him a little changed look and he's not as good offensively as Enoch but very active you might say he's been around yes and he's been here and there <laughs> tither and yon what's he think he's a network play-by-play -play guy Akoya Gao is <laughs> sort of the AC Earl of his generation he played at three different places uh, a most recent stop at SMU and like coming back to after, time, yeah. <laughs> after being at Georgetown Called several of his games there. 24 years of age today, by the way. Akoya Gow. 15 to 7, Seton Hall, an eight-point lead for the Pirates. 
shot and made those free throws. There's a nice job on free throws. And once again, the ability to get it in the low. Torian Thompson, and no cover from the rear. Well, Syracuse transfers into the scoring column. He is a key guy for this season, I think. As he grows, certainly going to help this club. Look at that hand. Oh, he's made a ball. Points from paint now belonging to Seton Hall, too. Eight to two in that category, and I think that steps. Well, they may have gotten under the there. There was an overrule. It is steps that'll go the other way. A good give. Getting back to Thompson, he can make a deep shot. But he falls in love with it. Yeah. They'd rather see him slip, do some damage around the rim to make them a much better offensive team. Tonight, the sixth-ranked Ohio State Buckeyes try to keep their playoff hopes alive. They take on number 21 Northwestern. Coach Fitz's team in the Big Ten Championship. Coverage starts at 7 Eastern on Fox or watch anywhere on the Fox Sports app. And if you look at the final college football standings, Ohio State right now in the sixth position. What would it mean? This is about style points. you got to win and win impressively. Oklahoma in a similar position over in the Big 12 Conference as they try to make it into that frenetic finish in the final four of college football. You like Georgia? I think they have a... I think they got a chance. Yeah. And, and if that happens, we've got mass that chaos. Changes. Oh, yeah. yeah. Mass chaos. Well, so far, this uh, Seton Hall team has been... You know, spreading it around, six field goals by five different guys, and they've been as effective inside as perhaps they've been all year. And, and Louisville really sluggish in, in a way right now. I like the way they played against Tennessee. You know, Graham Williams, of course, had those score field. Uh, and, of course, Marquette, nice little penetration oh, yeah. again. That's what he can do. He is clever, and he's excellent going to his left as well. And that's what Kevin Lillard wants to see from him, too. And put it on the deck and take it to the 10. Man fell. Seton Hall defense has been tough, especially along the perimeter. McMahon, not much room to shoot. Yeah, they know. Well scouted. Williams on the floor now to do some damage offensively. DJ King into the game. Oh, off of the wow. window and in. The little, bank is open early. A little kiss. In Newark. A little kiss. <laughs> You know, available. His confidence has been shaken early in the season, Bill, and they, they need him to play big, Louisville. There's another one off the heel from downtown for Roden, Jared Roden into the game. Not shooting it as well from deep. Over 2,000 points in high school. There's four Jordan playing the nylon song. One man from Huntsville, Alabama, and transfer from Richmond. These are complimentary players that they picked up late after Chris Mack got in there. They're going to play big roles for this Louisville team in the ACC if they hope to be in the upper division. Oh, that really lets me stroke. One of the better ones. Slave them. Something with the rebound. King again. Missed everything. Out of bounds. If we may get an overall, it's going to stay on this end of the floor. It'll stay with Louisville. Early on, the Pirates getting the job done with Torrey and Thompson. And how about a little ATM from the window pane? DJ King just in, just in. Welcome back to Fox College Hoops, sponsored by Jeep Grand Cherokee. Our score 19 to 11. And let's go inside the huddle of the Louisville Cardinals head coach, Chris Mack. Offensively, if we get movement prior to us getting in the lane, we'll be able to attack, come to a jump stop. We have to deal with pressure. We got to be able to deal with pressure. Uh, one way of doing that is with that dribble drive. You can see two pivot foot either finish or find some people. And they've just really done a great job of the offensive class to stay in this thing. And over on the other side, here's Andy Katz. All right, thank you, Tim. Well, Kevin Willard, very pleased with, obviously, the first 12 minutes here. He did stress two things, though. First eight minutes, excuse me. Stressed two things. One, getting on the backboard. Seven offensive rebounds for Louisville and transition defense. Stress both of those. Back to you, Tim. Indeed, uh, those offensive rebounds have not been converted as much as he'd like. You can see Williams just into the game. He can shoot it Ooh, in a week. The big fella not going out to tag. Mm -hmm. That hurts. And Gill got the foot coverage, but he's very good around the rim. He catches things to tip. Little 7 nothing scoring run here for the cards. It's 19-14. Have a good look here. Leave your feet. EJ EJ comes out of there with it. Defense! 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 
Ball screen is a big guy doesn't cover real well. Four, not there. Ripped down by Gill. He's got some good size. They can set some picks and run alley oops for him as they attempted to do a moment ago. Here's Kale on a dribble drop. Oh, he's in the window. Like this kid. Very strong. Good offensive rebound to two. You know. Last year when Desi Rodriguez got hurt, he had to play about three games in a row, and his confidence grew at that time as you see the reach-in foul committed by McKnight. I uh, gotta be able to go both ways, a little bounce, a little hesitation, explode, kiss to boot. Nice wide open middle for that opportunity as well. Not much coverage. That's the one thing when you look at both of these coaches, their defense is part of the absolute philosophy, the Absolutely. mantra. Yeah. And, and that when they don't guard, it just changes everything for them. You know, in our pregame, Chris Mack was talking with Andy Katz, and he, he said, you know, the thing he loves about playing against Kevin Willard, so familiar with him, is it's about toughness. You've got to be, they're very, very similar in their approaches and philosophies about the game. Well, this is a set of even Ooh, if it goes is in. It ever, but it does go in for Dwayne Sutton. He's a player, tough kid. And suddenly, Louisville just down by four as we've reached the halfway mark of the first 20. A little box set and a duck in. They did a pretty good job initially seating all, but didn't cover deep. And Sutton's active hands gets the knock away. Uh, the ability to do damage around that rim. That was the opening play, and then NC, whether it was the tip in this case or that little hook earlier, and just blow by by Kim. Thompson has been really effective at driving in these situations. A tough shot. Was it ever? Wow. It goes crying off the front iron, and it's pulled down by Wara. Boy, be willing to eat it. Sutton again, nobody <laughs> gives out guards. <laughs> hey, if I'm gonna make the first one, I might as well take that open jumper. Yeah, Kevin not really happy with it, though. He does a lot of dirty work, a hustler. Dwayne Sutton, a lot of little things besides ringing that bell outside. Averaging seven and a half and five and a half boards. This is now a 13 to two run, 21 to 20. Seton Hall, we've had some stunners this week. How about Wofford? How about that? They Texas got Carolina Southern. A couple of years ago, two years ago, right? Tell you something, that, uh, Texas Southern, that's a, a very important win for that program. And how about Radford? You're right. That was That's a solid Texas team that we saw in Las Vegas. For we them sure to did. win that game is very important. Uh, they, I thought they played well there, too. Solid, got ahead, and blew a lead. A lot of mid-majors, Bill, already this season making a mark. And, and this is a time of year when we have, and for these two teams, uh, as you know, when you go intersectional, out of conference, these are games that help you if you're on the bubble in the month of March. Well, it might also help the number, the line you're on as well. Nelson back on the floor along with Powell, Mamou Kalashvili, NZ. There's a little ball screen on it. He does a great job on his rubs oh, to get that look. That. Off the heel this time, though. Nice, that's like he was really we're going the other way. Here are those mid-majors we were talking about, Bill, and uh, I don't think there's any question Nevada is really solid with the job Musselman has done. Yeah, absolutely. We saw them a little bit in Vegas, too. No question about it. He's on a run. Thurman got that win at Villanova, and, of course, the Wildcats have gotten better since. And Buffalo beat West Virginia at West Virginia. For the Martins and Colin, and uh, he's done nothing yet, and he's their score, Aurora. Ooh, not a good look here. No. The, the spacing Tough simply wasn't there. No. And here comes McMahon the other way. What a pass! And great well. defensive work by Mahmoud Kalashvili. Boy, Sandro is playing big on he the is. defensive end. Powell. With not much production in the last few sequences, both defenses stepping up. That's big for them to get. Look at this, uh, kind of a tough little catch. Nice, make this simple pass down there, and this is just a terrific recovery. You mentioned Sandro, the ability to block some shots and cover. Pretty good speed, knows this game, solid. You know, uh, look at him, Bill, he's a classic stretch four in a lot of ways. Great passer, very versatile, but with this particular team, they need him in the low block playing good defense and he's done that so far this kid has really got a great straight he a free throw you're upset but Mamu, by the way this summer kevin willard visited georgia mm -hmm. a lot of us were hoping maybe they wouldn't let him back but that's another story obviously and we don't mean the georgia yeah. that's playing in the no, sec no. title game we mean that other one exactly yeah. 
And uh, this kid has played <laughs> against adults, and that's right. what makes him understand the game a lot more. 22 20. See, now Louisville has never led in this game, but they are in the midst of a nice run, trailing by two. A little bit of a matchup now. You gotta be careful of more very active. Search his shots and this kid can stroke it. Yeah. He missed his first three though since coming into the game. He's also having to check Powell on this end of the floor. That can disturb your stroke. And he can elevate over yeah. the yeah. about that? That's the difference in this game, I think. You think you could force him to put it on the game. Accomplished at the rim. Nine in the game for the Trenton, New Jersey native. Trenton Catholic, Miles Powell. On the deck again with Laura. McMahon gives it up to Cunningham for three. And there's Sandro again with a nice rebound. He's done a great job. Look at that. Look at that. See what with the right. Running. Stretch four. Yeah, with the right. Wow. He's using a bounce. 26 to 20 to Hall. Really outstanding crowd for this early in the day in Newark, New Jersey. I'm watching Kevin Moore. He's looking for the calls at the other end. It's comical. He knows exactly what's being run. They've played against one another enough. Oh, yeah. 16 Not a good gamble here. 16 points in the paint, Bill, for Seton Hall. That's McMahon again using the ball fake this time. Great distribution to War, but it's too late. What a good set. They've been really confused defensively. Straight up man, a little matchup. None more confusing. This ability, you know he's a lefty, generally favors that dominant side. But how about some strength? Lost a ton of weight, got some speed. But Mama do what most of us can. <laughs> he lives really with a big time finish. Both ends of the floor playing solid basketball. Our score next door to Gotham City, 26 to 20. The Hall, 10 field goals, eight in the paint, two from downtown. As you look at uh, the AP top 10, the Zags are right there, of course. Kansas and Duke. Uh, Virginia had a big win against Maryland earlier in the week. And how about tonight? I think uh, Gonzaga plays great. Brandon Clark. Hachimori. I yeah. love that. That's Rui, a really talented kid, averaging 21 and 5. And Josh Perkins runs the show. And Zach Norville, very good player as well in the backcourt for the Zags. And no Tilly yet. No, uh, no they, Tilly they yet. In the ankle, our, uh, our stress fracture. So they think better than the conference play starts. At least that's what I've read. Real test coming for Creighton too in that game. And our friends Justin nice Cutcher. slip again. Uh, Marshall will have that. There's Enzi again inside. Knocked away. Really good defense good by cover. Louisville there. A little late, but effective. Louisville close to within one, but since then it's given up five on answer. Nice job here using e Ducks. He loves to bounce both hooks, right and left. Cunningham gives it up to four. Boy, this defense has been terrific. Has been. In the paint. Ooh, Ooh, that looked like a lot of leather to me. No way that should be a foul. Foul goes against pretty good defense. Yeah, I thought it was really good. Sandro's going to pick this up against Enoch. It looked like a lot of ball to me. Boy. A little quick with the whistle on that yeah. particular play. And you can make a case that a lot of times when your arm goes down that they're always going to do that. But in that case, I don't think his arm went down. I think he just raised it. When we, when we go out to an establishment, your arm never goes up. <laughs> Like in my turn. <laughs> Enoch at the free throw line gets the first one to go. 86% at the strike, the UConn transfer. And Gill back in. He's in watching practice, seems to understand what he can do and not do, which is very essential as a player. Stays around that rim. You know, in many ways, Bill, and you've been around the program for years, even after you coached with TJ and now with Kevin. I thought that last class that just graduated gave the foundation, and now there's a comfort zone with where this program is. It's recruiting like dynamite. Next year, got two of the best players in the country coming in. Great evaluator of talent, too. A little Nickel Weimer here on 13. Keen picks up the foul on Kale, who was making his move to the rack. That's the first on DJ. Well, if you can't stop the dribble, you can't win. And that's very, if Louis wants to win, they got to stop that ability to turn the corner. A little conversation going on as uh, some woofing was taking place apparently between uh, Anthony Nelson and Kristen Cunningham. A high pick and roll by Gill, but nothing there. They have to give it up. Nice option to Kale. 
Can't get it to go. How about that? He stayed with it. He's amazing around that rim. He's a picker. Using the left hand that time with the follow. Oh, not a good foul by Nelson. He can't get there, just regain position. But the ability to do some damage around the rim, they bite on the... They, I thought he could have stood his ground there and picked up a charge. Now the number's really picking up in the paint with that follow by Kale. 18 to 2 now, Seton Hall in the painted area. I think Enoch's got to get some touches inside for this team. He's been really good when he's had it. Yeah. Got clock under 10 again, Bill. Looks to screen and roll. Perry cuts. Gets it to go. How about that? That's, That's a big time delivery. It was. With the clock winding down and no other options. 28-24. That's five in the game for Darius Perry. The lead ball screen slip. There it is. Inside the deal. That's going to be an offensive foul. Player control. Well, you're leading him to the problem, you know? Got to look ahead on that pass. Looks like he's open. Uh, this is just terrific individual ability. Getting squared, knocking down that shot. And uh, right here, the, you've got to anticipate the step in as a passer. Perry, by the way, back in the starting lineup after coming off the bench against Marquette. Scoring four points, started the first four games before having to come off the bench. There's a great pass and a tremendous delivery inside by Enoch. Never saw the ball defensively. Not good at all. Once again, Louisville claws to within two. Every time they have, Seton Hall has had a quick burst to extend the lead back to six or eight. Nice play. Powell, a step back three off the ball fake. And Erwin Sutton with a quick release. Numbers two on one to Enoch. And that a ring the bell. Bad shot. Those corner jumpers lead to fast breaks. And we're tied at 28. From 12 down, we're now tied. One thing about Powell, you, you give him the liberty of taking some bad shots. Defense looks like it's stepped up for Louisville. Nelson. This is Dexter. He does. He goes. <laughs> he dropped a dime and it was flushed by Gill. And they don't get back. Oh, not a good pass. Nelson comes away with it. Numbers again. Four on two. Easy. 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 32-28, Seton Hall. Nothing like experience. NC wire to wire, filling that lane. Great acknowledgement. With an errant pass on the baseline. And again, after tying the game this time, a quick burst from Seton Hall. Once again, a little matchup. Perry off the ball. He likes the contact. He doesn't, doesn't it? mind it at all. Not too bad, that post area. Arius now with seven, and it's 32-30. Very entertaining game here to open our triple hitter on Fox. Two picks together right here. Gill and Enzi. Why not? Off the heel this time, and it's ripped down by Darius Perry. And Wara really silenced totally, and yet Louisville right there. Sutton strong. Oh, indeed, using the left hand. 32 to 30. Some toughness about that kid, isn't there? Yeah, we're tied now, just like that. A lot of counter-punching taking place now from an offensive standpoint. Baseline rubs. Well, since Malou Kellis really left the floor, Louisville's been able to go inside a little more. Uh, he's he's with an answer on the baseline. How about the patience there? Yeah. Back to the basket. Let the traffic subside. Big time delivery. Be interesting to see if, if Louisville is able to go back inside again. Since Sandro left the game, they've been a little more productive in the paint. Nice job with this trap. Read and recover. And the turnover. We're really unable to get on track, but the dribble drive so pretty. The southpaw delivery at the end. Full extension. Gill. Disarm, but Michael Enzi, nice to be around the town. Knows that location. <laughs> Knockdown hooker. <laughs> we do the best we can. Thank you, Mike. 34 32 our score. Let's take a look at the playbook sponsored by Lexus. Bill? Uh, they love to get the ball inside whenever possible. This is their box set. The elbow is covered. We're going to just see a little cross screen. 
on a nice diagonal to set him up and just beautiful acknowledgement with the pass no communication nobody's staying at home and seeing the rim and that's the advantage of moving Gill around I think he's a little uncomfortable away from the rim nice set play they've done a nice job Louisville of late getting involved inside and of course Enzi has been impactful in that area Sandro Mamou Kalashvili has uh, been a defensive presence and with him on the floor really Louisville could not do much inside and since he left they've been very effective Enzi by the way 4-4 four four today in his last two games he hasn't missed he's 12 of 12 and there's a return to sender and a foul is going to be charged this time on Enzi as he reached in but Sutton has been outstanding number 24 for Louisville he sure has just see so many things he can do the three a lot of times he's available on dribble drive kicks but he has created on his own in a matter of fashion here with, with the dribble to pull up it's just solid basketball early by him Akoya Gal at the free throw line an amazing story we touch base on him a little earlier Bill, when he came over from uh, Africa, from South Sudan, he didn't go to school until he was 10 years of age. And think about that. Graduate already now of Georgetown, and at 24 years of age today, he's become a real leader for this, this Louisville team. Dino Gaudio told me prior to the game, he said, I'm telling you, in practice even, he's like a coach on the floor for this team. And uh, with a young team and as many transfers as they have, and especially his being one of them, it's made a big, big difference for Chris Mack in his first he, year. He runs the floor, not bad around the rim. I wish it was more. At the end of your career, too, it's a little bit different. Yeah. You're going to give everything you can, but you're going to be very blessed to have that six year. Yeah, you're not worried about the next big thing. You're just enjoying where you are. Got a fadeaway one-handed shot. Reminds me of Patrick Ewing last year. When did you practice that shot? <laughs> this is Louisville now seeking their first lead of the day. They've been tied on a couple of occasions. Warren got there. And it's pulled uh, down by Nelson. He's got to let the game come to him. Powell. Driving baseline now needs help. Risky pass, but he completes it. Ooh. And there's a drive by Nelson. How about the ball take? Everything oh, but by Nelson. Oh, wide open. The old Globy look away. And again, Louisville with a chance to take its first lead. Kristen Cunningham operating at the point. Got to stay at home in the corners. Sutton's been a quality find. Yes, he has. Well, oh, he can really take over the little things. Taking advantage. First lead of the afternoon for the Ville. 14-point swing since trailing by 12 earlier. You see the time remaining in the shot clock differential. Howell can't get it to go. Loose ball, though, and four. Juan Four comes away with it. Now the two-second shot clock differential. See if they get Warren involved just a little bit with his head into the game for the second half. Go with a 1 4 set. Probably run out. out. What do you think? Run out. Pick and pop. Do better than more. Got a push off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The chicken wing was out. What a shame. And he was tagged. How about that? Extend that arm. Easy call. Good footwork as well by Cam. So excellent. Yeah, and a tough second foul for Cunningham to get prior to the intermission. And now Seton Hall, who had led most of the way until surrendering their first lead at 36-34 with a chance to tie or take the lead at the break. I like them extending the floor defensively to Louisville. Don't get a head start. Plenty of time to get to the rim. End to end. Nelson. Blow by on King, and he's rejected. Nice work by Agal. The last 12 and a half minutes, Louisville outscores Seton Hall 29 to 15 to secure the lead. It looked like you got an easy one here, Tim. All of a sudden, a long arm collectively of Louisville. He's an eraser. And let's go over to Andy Katz. Andy? All right, thank you, Tim. There was one point in the huddle, Chris, where you weren't pleased with their shot selection. How much did they listen to you the last few minutes? Seton Hall has a lot to do with that. You know, Kevin mixes up his defenses. 
you know, our guys were uh, a little confused whether it was zone or man. Regardless, we still have to play with poise. I thought we did that in the last seven, eight minutes because if you get them out in transition, they're really, really dangerous. When you get in that locker room, what's the first thing that you want to emphasize? Well, we can't be that team that came out to start the game. You know, I thought we had that little deer in headlights look. And uh, again, it's our first time on the road. Now we not have to know what to expect. It's our ball coming out. Got to be composed with it. And then defensively, just have an awareness on Miles Powell and keep the ball out of the lane. Thanks, Chris. Thanks, Andy. Back to you, Tim. Extraordinarily comfortable in his new digs in Louisville. They lead by two at the break. And we'll send you to Mike Hill and company in Los Angeles right after this. You are watching College Hoops, a great intersectional matchup today. First of three on Fox. At halftime, our score 36-34. Louisville by two. They trailed most of the first half. Tim Brando alongside Bill Rafter. You'll hear from Andy Katz in a moment. Mm -hmm. Very entertaining first half. Very much so. I think the defensive you know, all particularly early, was very confusing and, and sort of threw off the rhythm of Louisville. But they got their footing, started to dribble, drive a little bit more, and develop their inside game. Let's take a look at our Jeep first half stats. And, and Bill, one of the things that you have to notice is that uh, dominance for the Hall inside the painted area. Yeah, absolutely. Really solid in that area. And the one thing, too, they kept Louisville only six free throws off that free throw line, which they have dominated early in the year. Well, two guys who were principal factors in that Michigan State win the other night have not been heard from in the first half today. And yet they are right there uh, in somewhat control. So uh, all of a sudden, I think they're a little relaxing by these two. I look more let the game come to him a little bit. Andy Katz has more on a couple of dynamos for the Hall. All right, thank you, Tim. I just walked back onto the court with Kevin Willard, and he told me that Mike Lenzi was running behind us, was throwing up, not feeling well at all. As for Miles Powell, he got popped during warm-ups on his right eye and basically said he's had a little blurry version at the beginning of this game. When I, he was looking at the stat sheet, I said, what, do you, what jumps out at you? He said, it's Sutton. Two big threes. He got them back in this game. We've got to do a better job on him. Indeed. And there is some right as we come back to uh, live action. It's Moore with his first bucket. So they saw at halftime Chris Beck did what we did mm -hmm. in the uh, box score, and they address it on the very opening opportunity of the second half. 38-34 Louisville. And that's the experience on the bench. Get him involved. Get his head in the game a little bit. Nice hesitation by Quincy, who had the foul problems. Enzi in trouble, but makes it happen over Enoch. He's, he's Enoch's a little upset with himself. He stayed on the ground, didn't go up in time to knock it away. Hall with a little full court action. Oh, oh, Stabs oh, took yeah. an extra step. Yep. So you want to attack the press, but understand where you are on the floor. And Chris mentioned the first road game. When you think of it, neutral site at Barkley, right. there's a lot to be said for it. Not enough of these games. You know, the, the connection between Kevin Willard and Rick Patino had a lot to do with this series taking place. And, and Bill, I love seeing these kinds of games on schedules in December. Well, enjoy it. Yeah. They're going yeah, away. Yeah, I don't think it with the 20. Nice little slip. This kid does that. What an extra oh, pass. A big time. And there's Sandro Mahmoud Kevin who was a major factor on both ends of the floor. When he sat down, Bill, in the last six and a half minutes of the first half, Louisville went on a 16 to 8 run. Well, they had to take him out with the two fouls, save him for this run. Here he is with a body on Enoch down low. Nice help. It's just harder down there. I think yeah. he may have picked up a third, though. No, was that him on that? Yeah, well, no, it's going to actually go against Enzi, Enzi, Enzi instead. So that's the second on Enzi. Speaking of the connection with Willard and Patino, on the staff in 2005, you see Kevin. Of course, his father was connected to Rick for such a long period of time. Nice smile in those days. I haven't seen that in a while, particularly during the 40 minutes. I'm always envious of those guys that can go with the shaved head look and and make it work. Mm -hmm. And he did, as well as Chris Mack, his oh, counterpart is. today. Very good counts. <laughs> Warren's got to get on track for that. This, this kid's a really fine offensive player. Gets that one to go. 39-38, Louisville by one. 90 seconds gone here in the second half. And Kirby's really done a nice job. Oh my God, but this five. So conscious of where Powell is going. 
all of a sudden nobody helped, nobody stuck the hand into Rake on the dribbler. And how about this finish to a full run by Enoch too. Surprising they come up with that block. That's his first bucket of the day. And that's that little double screen high. Pal goes one way, center might dive, and how about that body search and finish, Quincy. <laughs> Bill, you know, he scored 914 career points at Sacred Heart, and I know he's more of a facilitator, but with this particular team, we were talking about that second guy for Powell. There are going to be some nights when it needs to be this guy. Uh, that's a good is going to be very good as the year progresses. 41-39. Impressive. Again, the arm extended. Unfortunately, is that number three? That's three. And a beautiful sell, too. Well, this press is discombobulated, no question about it. Yeah, you see that? The sell? I like, I like the way Quincy did it, though. You yeah. lean in a little and then give yeah. very yeah. heady play. Showing some savvy on the defensive end. So the Hall, three out of three from the floor to open this half. After falling down by four, now lead by two. They switch this little slip up top. Owl cradles it inside the painted area. That's what makes it more attractive. Doesn't have to rely on that deep thrust. He's into double digits now with 11. Warren in traffic needs help. Nice rotation. Again, less than 20 before they get into anything. Nice hands. Ooh, and even better hands Ooh, by the Gullows there. <laughs> They're looking for a double tick, but how about this drop step and footwork? Oh, that is pretty. Pretty knockdown away from traffic, no way to charge. A lot of guys spin right back into that body. Way to get your hands on it, by the way. Ooh. Usually it's a shot if I got my hands on it. <laughs> Here's Sutton, the problem spot that Willard talked to Andy Katz about. Oh, not a good defense here, the little duck there. Yeah, a little bit late. That, that's Violation. It's all from that press initially. Make the views climb. Yeah. This back not happy, wants the timeout. Well, they want a little run and jump to open the second yeah. half. A 2 2 1, back it off, put pressure, play the passing lanes. The Pirates, solid and confusing on defense. 43 39, three quick turnovers committed by Louisville. As Seton Hall has popped up its defense. How about the Murrays? How about these two? Bill and Luke. Uh, Bill, a big basketball fan, switch from Xavier to Louisville without mm -hmm. missing a beat, along with his grandson, and just a really colorful guy. You, you know what's great? We shared an evening once with him. He let everybody else entertain. <laughs> you know, it was not, it was not yeah. where he had to have the last word. Yeah. Uh, he loves about. this game, and of course, guess who's playing the Giants tomorrow? Uh, yeah. The Bears. <laughs> yeah. So I think he'll be there. Here's there he a, is. There's Luke Jr. How about that. By the way, I thought... Oh, oh don't do that to the baby in the morning. <laughs> don't scare the baby. One of the great post-World Series moments was uh, Bill Murray taking the microphone uh, after Game 7 with the, the Cubs in the locker room. And it was on our air. I absolutely loved it. It could have gone on forever. Oh! Would he set him up yeah. with that individual talent? Explosive. 45-39. Seton Hall has come out with a sense of purpose and passion here in the second half. Three minutes gone by. Aurora was wide open on the foul line. They would give it to him when he flashes like that. Nothing but air, but there's the pickup. A little loose change. Oh, you can't see it. And Defensively, you look yeah. to get a body, you know. Well, the Hall now five out of five from the floor in this half, and they've all come in the paint. Powell again driving. That's not a good play there. Tried to find uh, Sandro, but it goes out of bounds. Uh, by and large, makes very few mistakes, but here, great handle, great individual ability. Bring that ball back and explode to the rim with the left. Juan four along with Cunningham. Wara, and you see Enoch. And Sutton, the five on the floor for Louisville. Be careful with Sutton in the corner on his penetration. Cunningham taking it in, and there you see what the difference is made when Sandro is on the floor. From a defensive standpoint, he's been an eraser in there. Mamou Kalashvili. And be careful with NC on the ball screen. Does a great job, and if you don't cover in the back, he does some damage. Hale. Looking for an opening, he can't find it. Wise choice to give it to this guy with the clock winding down. Oh, that was deep. Had to settle. 
Rebound to War. Not much penetration. A little stop and Harry, go. Yeah, yeah. going to give him with a palm and a turnover. Well, he's off his game, but yeah. I think he is such a talented kid. Enoch is scoreless this half. Seen Hall. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, it's the first installment of Just One More. And I sit before you in the state of New Jersey where this man was tabbed the governor, and I just want to know about anything. What's on your mind? <laughs> well, my biggest concern in the next few days is Bill Murray came over and invited me to a party. Uh-oh. And I have a season to go through, so I respectfully <laughs> turned it down. I know my limitations, uh, but... Uh, <laughs> well, Timmy, you do bring back some great memories. Uh, back in the old Meadowland days, we did games together. We, right. You know, also John Saunders. Right. And, uh, of course, there's Bill. He, just, he really loves the game. This is great to see. It is. And, and of course, he way, loves his baseball, yeah, too. He, he loves does. that franchise. But we did tab you as the governor at that time. And uh, our dearly departed friend, John Saunders, was... Uh, very much in on that uh, nickname that we gave you. <laughs> well, how about Willard jumping on the bandwagon, too? <laughs> Just coach your team. Well, that's the first installment, folks. And here's the scary part. There are many more to come. Nice Just one more. Boy, NC. NC into Sandro. Three great passes. Again, that's they do that beautifully. They move the back people to the corner. It's very difficult to cover because you've got the, the corners covered. And now the slip. That's just great basketball. And Enzi, so unselfish, experienced, turns and faces, doesn't charge, finds Sandro. Kilish really with the ability to make three, and he does. Yeah, you know, his high school coach, Kevin Boyle, used to coach at St. Pat's in Elizabeth, New Jersey. He also mentored the current pilot assistant, Grant Dillmeyer, and Shaheen Holloway. I mean, it, ties are strong with those guys. Yes, the Apple McMahon, by the way, I gave Kevin Boyle the last scholarship before I left. He came to Seton Hall. Yeah. He ended up going to St. Peter's after a couple of years, but uh, that's sort of my claim to fame. I recognize talent. Yeah. <laughs> right, the foul was committed prior to the shot as Quincy McKnight picks up number three. Here is uh, Raftery in his glory days. Glory. 70 to 81. Well, yeah. anybody who's mad at me for my lack of ability, <laughs> well, that's too easy. A little double screen set up, four, able to knock it down. It's all Richie Regan's fault. He's the one, he yeah. and Father Horgan, that brought me here. Because Richie was one of the founders of the Big East Conference. His kids still come to these ball games and uh, just an impact on college basketball when he played, of course, as an AD and coach. Just elevate. My move. Yeah, nice. really what a pass. Or facilitate. And everything but the finish there. A missed dunk by Enzi. That's the first wrong. miss of this half from point blank range for Seton Hall. They were 5 of 5 before that, and that's a turnover. And that, they have just done a solid job on the two key guys. And when you put a scatter report up and get this kind of response, it's gratifying for coaching staff. And this end here, just a, a little flick at the back by War, maybe threw NZ off, but solid defense on the other end. Bill, going back to the end of the first half to that missed dunk, they were 9 of 9 from the floor. They're, the only miss is a slam dunk miss mm -hmm. for Seton Hall. Louisville with five turnovers in this half, enabling the five-point lead to Seton Hall. Strong to the hoop, and he's fouled. When they go to the basket, they're a different team. You can see they were stymied a few times, stayed on the perimeter, but anytime they could turn the corner and create, get the defense to step back up. And what a job uh, Kevin has done here, too. Everybody thought with those seniors gone, they're going to be a fair program at best. But there's growth potential here. Yeah, no doubt about it. Juan Four, by the way, got that foul. It's interesting. And, and they're talking with um, a lot of basketball people in this area, the five boroughs, and now into the you know, state of New Jersey. A lot of inner city New York kids come to Jersey mm -hmm. to play and vice versa. Right. The Jersey kids go into the city. Well, I think it's part of where they play. Yeah. And the uh, popularity and the exposure that they get. Not only newspaper, but television. 50 to 43. Seven point cushion now for Seton Hall. A guy lost it to Powell. This is where he's dangerous. Stop and go all the way to the right. Or either the three or the step back. And Chris Mack is upset. He felt he got away with a carry. I think he was more concerned about a foul at the other end. 
19 to 5 run going back to the end of the first half and the opening six and a half of the second a kick ball but what a difference when you've got a player uses screens beautifully and also the deck star to use the bounce to ecstasy boy he is playing great basketball well, I think that call was made earlier on Chris Maxstein and he wanted it to go that time for him and it did not. There's the gal again in traffic. Now, Luke Kellisville is just a force in there defensively. McMahon well, finally that's... rattles one home. Boy, is that then loose ball? Everybody skirmishes. You don't get out on the shooter. But that's got to be one of those loose ball situations. Well, remember he made that shot when he did, almost seven minutes deep because it can be infectious. He can get really hot, very streaky from downtown McMahon. Sandro with a drum shooting. Kale from downtown. Sandro had a layup at the rim going up strong. A little too uh, generous that time trying to assist his teammate. There's four with a strong oh. move to the hoop. And it's pulled down by Enzi. Ooh, a little too much of a hurry, I think, on the offensive end. Powell with a quick trigger. Nice Good check out by McMahon, huh? Was it ever. DJ King comes out of there with it. He has one hoop today. Drive it. That's his game. McMahon. Here's a little dribble drop. <laughs> you don't see that very often. A little hang time from him. Powell on the loose again. He misses one with a finger roll. King gets the drop off. Yeah, drives baseline. That's a walk. No, nope, it's going to be a charge. Oh, Luke Kellisville again. But yeah. well, they're in such a quick hurry to do the damage. It's thrown them terribly out of their offensive ability now. And this is where you don't recognize your team. Got to get some composure out there. Guards have to take over for Louisville. That's two on B.J. King. Uh, Luke Kellisville will sit down. Very aggressive defensively with three fouls for the big fellow. And it's a good little spot here. You get a little rest. Use that TV commercial timeout. Louisville has six turnovers, only four field goals in this half. And uh, that gets them up to 13 for the game. A little different look with Gill on the floor. Now he's got to get to the rim. In traffic, Sutton corrals it for Louisville. McMahon, that's where he wants it in transition, right there. How about Sutton with the find out? And he'll keep nipping away. Yeah, uh, I tell you, McMahon, the Sarasota sharpshooter, can get really warm really quick. That's a personal 6-0 run for him and the Cardinals. Oh! McKnight off the bounce. Oh, shot to under duress. Nate Williams with the outlet. Get it side to side a little bit. Perry through the double team right to number 30. Hello. The iron on kind and it's pulled down by Gill. Well, the Louisville bench was ready to erupt. Yeah, they were. What a clean it. look he it, got. It was. A great pass, too. Yellow yeah, McKnight have to take over Louisville with Powell. There's, There's a rejection. Though. Malik Williams deflected that one. Enzi with a good job. They got him now. He's dribbling. Oh, double tick. Yep. yep. McKnight stays here with Louisville. Locked it away. Cardinals will have it when we come back. Toe to toe, the Big East and the ACC both have designs on March, but it's a December game to remember. Let's go inside the huddle now. Kevin Willard of Seton Hall. Everything's pretty good. Everything's pretty good. Okay. Transition defense. We got to work at a little bit. We got to stop the basketball. We got to find Sutton. Okay, we got a fine shooter. So say you got 30 in the game. Perry's a driver. Uh, he's talking about McMahon, number 30, by the way, just in case you don't have a shot chart. And he's right. you got to belly up on that kid. And he, like Powell, has become very good with the dribble as well. An open, unerring delivery by this kid. Let's go over to Andy Katz. All right, thank you, Tim. And Chris Mack stressing to his guys that he loves their resiliency, but also stay on your toes defensively. Not sure what 
Seton Hall is going to do when they come out of these huddles. Well, the last 318, the only player to score for either side is McMahon. A couple of threes. Here he is popping out into the passing lane as Powell and a foul given up by Perry. Pretty good foul, too, when you think of it. Oh, yeah. Even though you different it's number four i think if i'm not mistaken it is but it, not a bad play in terms of the team boy come out of a timeout you gotta get something right you gotta get a shot you gotta get an opportunity to follow it yeah, you could see the look of frustration on chris Mack's face now with four fouls the first and real foul difficulty is carried 16 foul also against Louisville. That's going to be a problem. Your guy, by the way. Yeah. He's done everything in this game. He was really with the fine, a little high low. Pretty good preparation at the TO. Michael Lindsay on the receiving end, and he knew what to do with it. Warren gives it up on the wing, and that three yeah, ball is it. dropped by Malik Williams. He can make it. He's not killing with the three. I mean, you're going to live with that if you're Kevin Willard versus him inside. Well, Seton Hall has really, when you think about it from a defensive standpoint, done a lot of good things, and yet Louisville has not lost contact. Not a good foul for three. No, and Powell with a little Reggie Miller act, too, to induce the foul that'll give him three at the free throw line. Well, when you're a good player, you know how to get free, you know how to get the contact and this is just great basketball that little high low and nc just spectacular and finding a spot a welcome spot for that delivery so powell at the strike touched on it a little bit earlier the incredible game that he had against grand canyon the wooden legacy most outstanding player 40 huh yeah you drop 40 it's going to be talked about you know, think about it. He committed just one turnover in 91 minutes of play pretty, in that tournament. Pretty efficient. Yeah. You know, in the 50s, believe it or not, I was told this, obviously. <laughs> Louisville, they used to play Seton Hall. And I think Seton Hall was undefeated, went on a road trip, lost to Dayton in like 53. They eventually won the NIT championship. Dukes and Regan and Hannon and uh, Brooks, some pretty good players. But uh, it just reminds me a little bit of that era when Louisville was coming to the NIT in the yeah. late 50s. Phil Rollins played on that team. Boy, you are going back. I remember that. I am being told about it. And as you see, the foul committed there by Powell trying to check McMahon through a screen. Yeah, those those are the ones I have to be told about. Yeah, exactly. Well, <laughs> for, fortunately for you. Even, even for me. <laughs> Phil still goes to the home games down there. Shot clock again, down to 12. And Sutton will launch. Well, he was a problem at the end of the first half. That was identified in the huddle, you might recall. Time by Seton Hall. Quick timeout taken by Seton Hall. And Chris Mack not pleased with that at all. I'm sure he's saying, how, how could that happen without possession? Yeah. <laughs> as he bangs the ball down, he was some competitor as a player. He is as a coach. A lot of the 50-50 calls he feels maybe have not gone his way of late. Speaking of Richie Regan, here he is playing at Seton Hall. Watch this pass off the seat of his pants. How about that, Bill? How about that? The cat had some flair. Walter Dukes in the open floor. Oh, my God. They played their home games at Walsh Auditorium, which is where we were. Yeah. Nice pull-up by the cat. All-time winning his coaches at Seton Hall. Look oh at that. God. Willard needs one to pass you. Oh, boy. I'm disappointed he's coaching if that's the case. <laughs> Should have done that a long time ago. Was funny, famous in those days as the coach. Also was a scout for the Braves and signed Joe Torrey. Wow. Frank Torrey. Wow. That's how he made his a few extra bucks. Man, that is a... Uh... I'll never forget getting my first Joe Torrey baseball card. All right. And of course, P.J., what a run yeah. he had, 89. Everybody remembers the most. With Andrew Gaze and company. Yeah. Great run. John Morton. The baseline rubs, curl. For the kids who see a better job of keeping their pivot foot that big. Good play. Yeah. Stepped in. He did. Oh, they got back. Yeah, they go the other way, yeah. That's nice anticipation. Yep. Yeah. Through the charge from McKnight. And that's number four on him. That'll force Quincy to the Pine and Roden will also check out as number 22 Miles Kale re enters the game. And now Nelson's got to take over, run the show, be effective. 
get them in some sort of a rhythm? Well, I tell you, I'm very impressed with how Ryan McMahon has developed as an all-four player. You know? That defensive step in was something he couldn't do a couple of years ago. And this is something he's good at, too, being without the basketball. Powell's got a big job. Can't relax. Here he comes again. Yeah. Number 10. Malik Williams will pump it again. Oh, it stayed on the rim for a while. Powell pulls it off the deck. He's two for nine from there. Nelson rejected by Malik Williams. Pretty explosive, too. Pretty good extension and reaction. Well, you see the story by half on Wara and McMahon. Both have heated up just a bit. Got a little percolation here. We'll see if they can keep it going the rest of the way. Now, Wara thinks offense, so he'll be undeterred. Nice. Deflected, but retrieved by Enzi. He's trapped immediately, nice and that's, uh, that should be a tie ball. The arrow stays here, so Louisville will control it. Nice job helping out the big guy, too. 15 on the shot clock. Well, both of these teams are strikingly similar, and we've touched on it a few times. And out of timeouts, they have uh, heated what their coaches wanted. Here's Kale on the drive, rejected by Williams. Nice kick out. Cunningham on the loose. Boy, nice recovery. Pretty good balance. Given a talk about defensive transition, that was extraordinary. It was. Jordan Warren wanted to take it off, and he couldn't. Here's the high pick from Laura for Cunningham. All the way to the hoop. A little late in the back that time, Nelson. Now that's the first field goal in six minutes for the Hall, for uh, Louisville, as they get the job done. Seton Hall struggling now. Two points now for Christian Cunningham. And struggling on the offense, too. They could have made separation. Kale. Now without Powell on the floor, or at least contributing on the floor, not a great deep shooting team. Uh, steal. Powell got his hand in there. Nelson finds him on the wing for three. Air ball. Kale lost it to the man. Quick hands. Nothing there. That's smart. He threw the open floor opportunity. Seton Hall is now 2 of 13 from downtown. The most effective when driving into the paint. There's a three ball that does not fall. Amu Kelestoni brings it down. That fast break that they settled for the three, they could have had it too easy. I mean, the old timer, nice slip. Oh, Sandro staying with it. Warren comes down with it. Got a really good dish. Warren up and under. Let go. Second the offensive rebound. He's rejected by Manu Kelestoni. A leak out to Kane. And the athleticism at the rim, but just excellent defensive positioning. Rejected in a run out. Crowd becoming a factor here at the Rock in New Jersey. This is like a home court, doesn't it? Oh, yeah. Cunningham trying to go to the rim. Off the bounce. Tough. Tough, he knew. Quick timeout. Knowing his team is winded by Chris Mack. 6.03 to go. Starts with defense. Timmy usually does get those open floor opportunities. Blue turns the tide. And how about this? Send it in. Pretty good at the rim, huh? A kill call. <laughs> Knock it down. Quick look at our game reset. Foul difficulty, you see. McKnight and Perry leading the way in the back courts. And the possession arrow and a tie ball will go to Louisville. You see the team foul story. Well, let's go inside the huddle of the Louisville Cardinals and Chris Mack. When the, when, when the game gets going like a carnival, and then we come down here, and, and we're not poised with what we do, like that's going to be the result. Give them one on no layups, and he, we got to value the ball when we get it on offense, and make them grind and make them work. Defensively now, we have to make sure that, like, stagger ball screen, we're going under. Stagger ball screen, we're going under. Speed of the game, that's been their problem, too. Rushing into shots, the other end is going to a little change. I don't think they'll go under on a pal stagger. Let's go over to Andy. Well, thank you, Tim, and I can tell you that Kevin Willie was something, stressing something very similar. 
he kept telling his players, if it's not there, reset, kick it back out. So show that offensive patience. On the defensive side, make sure you get back and board. And I also tell you, as you see Miles Powell on your screen right now, remember we told you about how he got injured in warm-ups? He's still rubbing that right eye. It's clearly still bothering him this afternoon. Back to you, Tim. All right, Andy. And, and by the way, Stephen Enoch has sat for the last 820. Now pick number 23. Back on the floor, out of that timeout. I look for him to get some touches down low. I think he can be a factor. Powell, without the ball, pretty active. Anthony Nelson now running the show offensively. Leaves it for Enzi. That little teardrop won't fall baseline, and it's pulled away by Quan Four. Now let's see if they have the patience now that the coach has for it. Pick a side on the high ball screen. With the switch they want and underneath. Good job by Kale, fight position. Cunningham finds DJ King wide open. Boy, he's struggling with his confidence. He sure is. They need more from him. Powell with a teardrop. It won't fall. Pulled down by King. I think he might be a little fatigued. He's had some pretty good looks for him. Cunningham tries to answer. Enoch had it, but lost it. Nice work there by Michael Enzi again. Then a nip and tuck battle throughout. Louisville has made runs. Seton Hall has had control for the most part, but you've never been able to run away. Here's Sandro. He's not the shoot that no, three well. No, he's two now of 14 from downtown after that miss. We've been very effective on the side today. But we're driving. Yeah. The Hall now one for their last nine. Louisville one for their last six. And Iron has gone downright frozen for both. <laughs> Cunningham loose for three. Wow, he is tough. Can't get out quick enough on him. Now the same for transfer, making a real difference with that bucket to tie it at 59. Back at home in Kentucky, though. Yeah, Georgetown, Kentucky is home. Well, just hasn't really found it in here. Oh, now he was hoping for a call that he did not get. He felt four. Got him on the shin, but no, no whistle. He can't press Powell now, but he's going to have to steal some here. Cunningham has his seven points in this half. Looking to make something happen on the switch. That's his game. Yeah, that's what he's got to do. Attack. Now that's the guy that they really need more from. Physically, he's got the tool. And he's been down the road, too. Yeah. Time out. Louisville's first open, lead. Huh? That's the first lead of this half, Bill. Yeah, a little nylon. He has played well. Steps outside. Tough cover. And how about this? King on the rise. Crown him at the rim. <laughs> By the way, in our game, uh, players to watch at the outset, we've seen Laura not as effective, but it's been Miles Powell carrying the day as usual for the Hall. Uh, this timeout may be helpful for Powell. He's a... Uh, been asked to do a lot of things. Obviously, playing without the ball, a lot of running. Laura on the sideline right now. He's going to have a nice career, though. Really struggle today. Every game's a test. It is. Preparation. They know your number. They know what the play that's called or designed for you. Well, well that issue, you think with both teams now, only one timeout remaining, Bill, for the stretch run. But the question is still there for Kevin Willard. Who's going to be that next guy? They've gone 642 with only one field goal. That's why they've not been able to run away from Louisville, even though they played so well defensively. And Louisville's really done a nice job on Powell. Cole with a drive, and Enzi tries to keep it alive, but it's finally run down by Cunningham. Much better interior defense by Louisville. They've negated opportunities consistently. Hale was trying his best to drive to the basket, but he attracted a lot of attention. Nice help in the back there. Sandro with the front. Shot clock under 10. Cunningham in a lot of trouble. Sutton tries to bail him out. Kellisvili again. Boy, Mamou Kellisvili has been dominant down there on the defensive end. Stayed away from that fourth foul, too, Bill. Sounds like there's his pick and pop here. Working it for McKnight. And the little floater won't go. Why not use the glass on the layup with the left hand? 
with the birdie. He's tearing into the game. Wow, what a blow by him. What use of him off the pines? Well, he's got foul problems, four fouls, and he comes right into the game and makes an impact. Seton Hall has missed 19 of their last 21 shots. Combination of shot selection and great defense. Powell, bang! Well, as that gets you healthy quickly. 63-62. Here comes the crowd at the Rock. Hesitation. Enzi comes away with it. McKnight with his head up. Be careful to pal on the early. Trying to get number 13 the ball. Not, not going to be easy, but that's the goal. Shot clock now down to five. In traffic, off the heel, and it's pulled down by Cunningham, and not a touch. Not for a good trip. Not a good trip. We're under a minute. A must stop here for Seton Hall, and Chris Mack's going to get a timeout. His last one. We'll stay here with 54.5 and 21 to shoot. Now they've really done a nice job getting Cunningham to use the ball screen and end up with the mismatch they want. I still think if he knocks on the, on the floor, that is the guy who could post up. If they double, he can find somebody. Zero timeouts left, he's just notified. Well, we touched on that important win against Michigan State and what confidence it brought them before they got here. You see what lies ahead, including a big-time game against Indiana on December 8th. You'll see that game here on Fox, then Kentucky. And, uh, of course, Davidson is no layup when you play against Paul yeah. McKillop's team. And the Seton Hall schedule. Not easy, right? No, <laughs> not at all. I mean, State with Rutgers. Rutgers off a nice win at Miami the other night. That Kentucky game, Kentucky. part of our action next week as well. And In the guard? Yeah. Well, I've lost to Michigan State, of course, most recently. But I mean, listen, this is a very important sequence for where these two teams are as they head towards oh, conference play. And we looked out Merrill with Fernando, uh, the big fellow down on the block, which is a tough matchup for anybody. Well, that was the last time out, so you know this is the play in the hip pocket of Chris Mack that is a must make. Who do you feel like he's going to turn to? I think it, I think it's going to be Cunningham using some ball screens. They like that box set we saw earlier with a back screen to the box. And look who's on the floor. Yeah. McMahon. And by the way, yeah. And if, if you don't contain Cunningham, they're going to find him. How many times do we see the inbounder get the shot? Situations like this. Now with that assignment. Shot clock under 10. You were right, Cunningham on the drive, and there's uh -oh. the man for three. Hello, how do you do? And how over help it paid for it. Powell for three. Not there. Mamu Kalasvili with the rebound, and he's fouled. That was a big offensive rebound. Uh, you know McMahon's on the floor for one thing. You look at Powell down there, and he just leaves one of the great shooters in the country uh, just by keeping yourself busy. Look at the distance he has to go. That's all set up by that dribble drive. Cunningham turns heads, turns bodies. And McMahon able to convert big time. Now McMahon now with that bucket. He's hit three threes. This uh, third of this half. And that was after going 0 for 4 when he initially came into the game. So the offense for defense, Powell getting the blow. With Nelson on the floor. Got to make it to set up this defense. And remember, the shot clock will be off. And you don't have many options, so you want to deny it in. Maybe one little gamble. And then stretch the game out. Here they go. They got Enzi on the ball. Everybody face guards. They got a speed group in. Roden checks in for Mamou Kalashvili after making the free throw. One possession game. 
Seton Hall does have a timeout. Louisville does not. But they don't want to foul him. There's the trap. There's the trap. There's the steal. And Mark. Wow, what a play. It's down to one. I think, I think they, yeah, they thought, thought they had a steal. Yeah, yeah. They thought they had another one. So no timeouts for Louisville really came into play there well, on that how, track. How? Same situation. There it is again. Sutton now. They got to give it. Got to give it. Waited too long, and there's the quick foul. The wrong so, guy though. Yeah. They had a big guy, 86 percent. Perry. And Perry now at 87 percent will go to the line. Uh, so you get the clock in your favor a little bit. And he's just a wonderful trap, not intruding in the cylinder. And how about this extension? I thought it should have been an opportunity at a free throw as well. That's just the fifth team yeah. foul. Yeah, so no no shots for Perry because it's just the fifth team foul. So they got to give another foul before they can get to the free throw line. So this is one of those situations where they played so well defensively, yeah. they're stuck with fouls to give. Now McGuire's theory, right? Yeah, absolutely. There's a near five-second call. The ball was kicked. So they'll do it again. And now they're going to turn they gotta to take Warren, three ticks him up. Yep. They've got to take three ticks off. They may have, anyhow. I think that's what the conversation is about over on the other side. Now, you know, going home, Blue Hill's going to work on inbound Ooh. ball against pressure. Absolutely. And Chris Mack, who called that timeout to get the play he wanted, and ultimately the three-point shot for McMahon was made, but it has cost him on this end of the floor with these traps off inbounds passes. Don't forget, Seton Hall has one in their pocket. They've got a free safety, so shouldn't have a run out to the other basket. Be as aggressive as they want to be here. War has got it, and a quick foul, give it up. Right, now they're set. He thinks he's shooting. Yep. Yeah, that's still just the 16th foul. So it's going to take one more to get him to the line. 14.3 left now. Great clock management by Seton Hall. And they still have a timeout remaining. Kevin Willard can exhaust one, but Chris Mack cannot. Quarters. Was he out of bounds? He got a push. He did get a push. Boy, Willard was hoping that the boundary could act as an extra defender, but Anthony Nelson will get the bump. And that'll get him to the line for one and one. 81% free throw shooter. Ooh, 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 tell you what, he was yeah. losing it too, wasn't he? That was close. So Wara goes to the free throw line. And 81% on the year. One of two today at the line. And now you know Seagull has to squeeze. So obviously if a white shirt gets it, tip it back. Well, this one will determine whether it takes a three or a two. A foul on the floor, so I would think they'll push it. They got an easy one, take it. In fact, they got the one time out there. And as long as you've got number 13 and blue out there, you can send it to overtime with one quick bucket. Time out. Yeah, good call. Didn't have anything. That was the last one. Now they can design something. And uh, I think everybody's thinking about Miles Powell. Wow. But what do you, what do well, you think? What, what they do run a beautiful little play where he uses what you'd call a shuffle cut off the foul line, right. down on the box. And then they come get him again. And then they have another screen at the top of the key, which would give him an open opportunity. But I would think you'd switch everything at this point if you're Louisville. You know, exchange him with another defender. Well, it was a near seven-minute drop in this half that was so costly to Seton Hall. And they have struggled. Missed uh, 13 of their last 14 from downtown. They're 3 of 17 for the day. But you still, you've got to forget about that. Right. Have amnesia and come up with the right play with the right guy. Well, uh, obviously, it's going to be, if he doesn't have it now, somebody else is going to have to step up. You know, whether it's Kale, depending on who is on the floor at this particular time. Roden had been in. Let's see who they have when they get back out. 
Well, you got to really credit Louisville's toughness, don't you? Yeah, you I mean, sure they've do. been really playing from behind most of this afternoon. But that tenacity, that toughness that Chris Mack had with his Xavier team is really showing up here. Uh, if I'm Chris, I'm saying don't let Powell beat me. You know, even on a pick and pop, Sandro had an open look against St. Louis that could have won the game for him. Uh, that's something you might, they might end up having to give up. Uh, across the way, the officials are looking at the monitor. I think it may have something to do with the clock. It generally does in these situations. When was the timeout granted? But by the way, if Louisville does happen to win this game, give a lot of credit to the emergence of Ryan McMahon, who just didn't stop shooting even after an 0 for 4 start. He well, made the key baskets and uh, and did a lot of other things well. Yeah, he knows he's been a starter in and out here at the beginning of the season. Uh, Michigan State certainly knows what a dynamite shooter he is. I think you're right, Tim. They're going to see what time on the clock with the timeout. There's always a little lag. Here's, Remember the, the, here's the timeout. It's the player that has yeah. to be granted the time. The coach can That's scream for it, but the player's got to get the timeout. I think it's the right time. 10-5, 10-6 at best. Yeah. But every tenth of a second oh, means yeah. so much in today's game. Fun game. Oh, it has been. Really a great start of the tremendous triple hitter that we have for you today on Fox. Here again is a closer look for uh, officials to check. When did Quincy McKnight get credited with the timeout? Are they leaving it at 10-5 or are they still checking? Yeah, it looks like it's staying at 10-5. All eyes on that man right there, Miles Powell. Well, as you know, preparation, they'll be trying to take it from Powell. Might end up in McKnight's hand. Mamadou Kilishvili. And in the far corner, Kale as well. Just 2 of 11 today for Powell from downtown. I mean, the alternate is like a quick three and give it. Yeah. I mean, stretch it out. Uh, Get the quick two foul and yeah. then try to come back the other way. But we'll see. There'll be possibility of fouling on the, just before he shoots the ball. Powell a step back. Got his man airborne. Too strong. Out of bounds, last touch by Seton Hall. It was Jerry Roden. And Williams with a great switch out, making it impossible for Powell to see the floor. Again, difficulty getting the ball in bounds. Got to get, get six guys out here. Well, this could be huge for Louisville to get a win like this on the road after beating Michigan State. Oh, absolutely. At home the other night, a great week for them if they can hang on the last 5.6. Everybody's matched up, see if they go deep. They had six again. <laughs> In essence, getting a free timeout, too. Wara, quickly fouled by Powell. Really all you can do, 4.4 left. Here's that defense you were talking about, uh, Just Bill. a great reaction. A big guy coming out, making sure don't give him anything. On that switch, the size prevails. Can't get your legs under you, you're fading away. 25 or 6. He was trying to ball faking into a foul from three-point range, and he did a nice job of adjusting in midair, Malik Williams, to keep from picking it up. When we talked about the draft, the ineffective offense for Seton Hall, the defense for Louisville has been pretty special. It has been. And that's sort of the trademark of Chris during his coaching career. Or it drops them both. Louisville, eight points allowed in the last 9.44 of this game. That'll do it. That's a nice. huge win for Louisville, 70 to 65 over Seton Hall. A great win, and just a tough one to either club. Indeed. Well, they went away empty. For Bill Raftery and Andy Katz, this is Tim Brando. We'll send you to Mike Hill in Los Angeles right after this.